What's up, Los Angeles? This is Dante Bosco. You know how the saying goes, everyone in Los Angeles has a script to sell. Everyone has a story to tell. Hollywoods are no different. The only exception is, when we began our journey, we didn't have a script. So we created a scene that was filled with some of the most amazing stories. building one of the most important elements was successful spoken for many, the audience. The Shogun is back on the scene, and the Shogun is the master. Why don't you sit down and shut up? What? Why don't I sit down and what? I said, why don't you sit down and shut up? Why don't anybody who wants me to sit down and shut up come down here and make me? Why don't any 50 of you who want me to sit down and shut up come down here and shut up, motherfucker? Yeah, come on, fool. Then you etiquette is serious. That's serious business. The etiquette starts at basic ground level respect for the venue and for uh, the audience. And then the audience has to have that general respect for the person getting up on stage so that there's this camaraderie between the audience and the poet. You can have too much etiquette and it can stifle the creative flow. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Or you can have a lack of etiquette and you have a show that's just out of control. They have taken up space, they have harassed your teachers, oh, and they have intimidated you. Some simple rules. Turn off your friggin' cell phone. Cell phones off. Don't text an instant message and shit. People don't even pay attention long enough to listen to certain people do poems. They're, they're like in the middle of a poem, like, yo, he just said that, 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 that. That takes away the energy from the stage. The poet's doing his thing, and you're on the phone telling people that the poet's doing his thing. You're like, what the, like, pay attention. Sit there and listen. Don't take, dude, if you take a phone call, if you take a phone call while I'm spitting, we're gonna have problems. We got a problem here? We got a problem, nigga? I can't believe cats that take phone calls in the middle of the venue while somebody's spitting. It's the most disrespectful thing ever. And that's just simple home training. We're not talking about nothing that you don't know. There's no venue etiquette, it's just manners. Don't get up while somebody's on the stage. I'm sorry, excuse me, pardon me. I hate to say it this way, but if you're good, you can keep going. <laughs> You can roll right through it. While I'm performing my piece, you like walk right in front of me. If you walk across the stage while a poet is on it, then you best believe Simply Cat's gonna yell out, Get the fuck off the stage! Because that's rude. That's what that is. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? It's not cool, but it shouldn't stop the show. Attentive audiences are awed at my aptitude for articulate acrobatics and astonishingly abundant amounts of ad-libbed adverbs. I offer inspired idiosyncrasies of idiom, illustrate the illegal ills of ignoble institutions who play interplanetary invader games behind iron curtains while ignoring the injured innocents infected by inferior inoculations, impurities, infestations, inflated interests, and intolerable isms instrumental in the introduction of insurgents. Hear the magnitude of the message of my meter. Meditate on the method of my mode meant to move, make the myopic mindful of the most high, and multiply the mental majority. Determined dreadlock daughter of a drummer and a dreamer in the diaspora, it is my destiny to dabble in divinely designed daily dazzle. My duty to dig deep in diachronic dictionaries dancing from daybreak to dusk, disarming diatribe while deliberately delivering delirium doses of dexterity. Drawing diagrams and dropping definitions of dialect like Dickens calling diction the dress of thought. With thoughtful theatrics, I thread thrilling theme and threefold theory through my thesaurus, thwarting throwback theocracy with third eye theology. Student of the science of exactitude, in the evenings, I spend my energy evoking emotion, enlightening, emancipating, elevating each eardrum and earshot with the ease of expert, eloquent edification, excluding ego. You don't deserve nothing, you don't get nothing. You get what I give you. I got a contract between me and you that say, you do what I tell you to do. Therefore, shut up, don't say nothing, don't speak to me, don't look at me. You want to make a poetry show and pay everybody but the poet. That's absurd. That's like a tragic love story for me. Because promoters would be, yo, I got this venue, 3,000 people. 
You got to call, man. We need you. We want you to call. Cool, cool. So what? How much? How much you? What's what, what's the deal? What, give me the details. They got the caterer. They paying the caterer. They got the band. The band's getting paid. The house is getting paid. But the main act. It's supposed to just get up there and spit for free. I mean, people don't have any idea what we do. They really don't. Um, and they don't know how to promote it. So even when they understand what it is, and they go, this is going to be incredible, they don't know how to explain it to anybody else. It all boils down to communication, really, and to being a man, woman of your word. Um, if you lay everything out on the table from the start, people know what they're signing up for. Damn ya. When damn ya puts together a show, she tell you straight up, I only got this, or I don't have this, or I have this, but this is what I want. And you, you're very clear. Because sometimes like that hunger on being on stage, like it's like, ah, man, I, I haven't got paid yet. I gotta sell some CDs. People still expect us to come out and spend for free. Like, like we got the gas for free that we drove up there with. Like, you know, like the clothes on our back was given to us free to wear for that night. If people don't know how to promote what we do, right, and they can't really fill up the seats, then they can't justify paying us what we deserve for what we do. I will only work with promoters that I know look at the poet as an artist, as a human, and not as a dollar bill. I think in general, people that are just going to open minds to shield it from that, people that are trying to actually do features and go on tours, you know, you, you're, going, you're going to get it, you're going to get whack promoters, you shake it off, you keep moving because there's a lot of love out there and if you love this industry, it's going to love you back. Maybe if rap was all I had, I would have attacked it better. Twelve years in the rat race wasn't after each other. Now I got a daughter with a lot I got to get her. Gotta get my dollars together. Can't struggle forever. Guess player was right when he said never say never. Do whatever's in your mic with this mic, you might never see the light. Let you that type of go get her. Gotta go. See you later. Once the house is paid for, I wasn't made for. Open mic featuring sleeping on farm floors. Do it if I got her, but know that for damn sure. Can't get mine the way that you made yours. It's more vivid when you live it. Gotta live it to limit it. Gotta live with it. Make sure it's legitimate. Kids learn from example. Examine how you exhibit it. A sample of my style, not meant to mimic it. Midi Mackie, Boy, and Mac record the classic. Intimate, sentiment, sentimental lyrics hit. Stage with no mic, no beats, feel the magic. Passion of a working classman down to his last end. Rapping to the traffic, telling you I've been. Dreaming so long for this, so many long for this. Don't mind a long journey just so long as it's teaching me the business to be in the show. I could go on forever, forever we go. So my mother tells me I have a gift when it comes to this writing stuff, but I'm left-handed. So I guess I write words with the wrong hands, that the right message with the wrong people, and I swear I will talk myself to death if I don't find salvation to at least two good ears that will hear my problems. And forgive me, Lord, but I came to the realization early in life that I did not need religion to make me feel any worse about myself. But don't get me wrong, I am thankful. I'm thankful for being blessed with a father whose conscience was comfortable with violence and a mother who decided to spread her wings and fly herself into the armed forces before her first and only child could turn six. And I am lost, and I am searching for guidance, and I do pray. I pray my daughter be more confident in who she is and not what she has than I was. And I pray for a new heart with understanding because my heart does not wear a watch, has no concept of time, and my recovery time is based on understanding, but I still don't understand. And I pray, and I pray. I pray you fill those generation gaps with more understanding because I can see the slave of those young generations who would rather be dissing pyramids while praising projects. And I tell them I would sacrifice the I and me to get the slave out of you, but they don't hear me. If you ask a poet why they write poetry, money is not going to be their answer. This, this is, it's an art. You need to just, you know, you got to make some sacrifices. You're not going to ball the fuck out. If you steer clear of mistakes, there is less to cover up when your children tell you that they love you. Do not brush their words off like crumbs on a counter. Hear them. Receive them the way that you hear sermon because they mean it.